This video is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, welcome back everyone. It is time once again, we are going to look at some work today submitted by viewers like you. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so first up is this book, which I'm going to admit to you right now. This is probably one of my favorite things that's been sent in, well, in a long time, if not maybe ever. I absolutely love this little book, and I know that it looked like I just opened these. I actually opened this one a few days ago, and I've been just glued to it ever since. This is a little book that comes to us from Ron Hoffer. It's called From the Bronx to Berlin and Beyond. On the back, it reads, Stories and photos from my journey to unseat communism, clean the environment, and find the best borscht in the remains of the evil empire. Probably one of the wildest quotes I've ever seen on anything, but to put that in a little bit of context for you, Ron has put together a book documenting his travels over about four decades of when he worked for the Environmental Protection Agency on projects in Eastern Europe and also went into Russia. So you have to remember this is during the time of the Soviet Union and then of the fall of the Soviet Union, and he went several times afterwards. And so this is a really interesting little book that's been put together. So essentially what we have here is a long-term documentary project. And so there's a lot of text that accompanies things and there's images that we see. I really love Ron's style of work. Most of these images were done with a 24 millimeter lens they're mostly of people, and you do get descriptions and stories of who these people are as you go throughout. At the end of the book, you get some more of his fine art images that are kind of put in their own chapter. But what I really, really love about this is stylistically, his work has this sense of the vernacular that's involved with it. In other words, there's this snapshot aesthetic that comes through. And I see this much in the same way that you would look at like the work of William Eggleston, Stephen Shore, maybe even Joel Meyerowitz to an extent. And what I love about this is for documentary work is it brings you in, it personalizes everything. And I really love that. It makes it feel like I'm kind of part of this. And another big part of why this is so successful is Ron's writing style is really good in here. And when you read about these images, and you start to realize that this is not a book documenting one's journey and travels through Eastern Europe during their career. It's about people. And this is probably my favorite aspect of this. He's got a wonderfully descriptive style, and there's a couple different chapters in here. My favorite is probably this one on Julia, who was his interpreter that he worked with, oh, several times during his journeys going over there. And he does this wonderful description of his relationship with her. And it almost starts beginning to feel like a movie in spots. There's another gentleman named Boris who was, quote unquote, the fixer. And you start to recognize Boris over the years as he is in a lot of these images, and actually you see him get a little bit older. It's really cool. Cool, and it's almost like a film in that sense. And of course, we also get pictures of Ron himself over the years, which is great because this adds a really personal touch to this as well. Now, another point that I wanna make about Ron's book that I think is really important is I wanna talk about the design and presentation of this. This is something that I stress on a lot. I've reviewed a lot of books over the years, and as I'm starting to give critiques on these, there's sometimes an element of the design work that maybe doesn't work. And so I think it's really important to point out what does work and why it is so successful. So first of all, if you look at this collection of photographs, there's really nothing extraneous. Everything belongs to the project. And I think that's really important. It gives it a clarity and a unity. It's very well paced as you go throughout the book. Ron does support it with text. And you'll see that when he does so, it's dedicated to its own page or small section. And it runs within the flow of the pictures he's talking about. I know that seems really obvious but you'd be surprised with the stuff that we've seen that comes in where it just doesn't have that continuity to it. So I think that's one thing that's really important worth mentioning. The quality of the printing on here is exceptional. I think the color is really well rendered across all of the images. Obviously, a lot of these were probably either transparency or C41 types of films, and I think the color correction is just outstanding in this book. It has a vintage quality to it, but it's just really well done. And for those of you who find it hard to resist captioning your images, I love the fact that Ron has just done a list of photographs at the end of the book that tells you where each one was taken and what page it was on, what year it was, and gives you the information there. That way, if you want to go look something up, you have the opportunity to do so, but it's not competing against the work in any way, shape, or form. Anyway, the thing that makes this documentary book so successful to me anyway, is that it tells a story and it reads like a story. It's also interesting that there is a political side to this, but it's within context of different decades and it's really cool to see. And again, that's told through the characters and through the story. Ron, this book is exceptional. I'm going to put a link below. I highly recommend this book. He does have it for sale. It's a short run. He said it's limited to about a thousand copies. I would 
get one now while you can find it. I, I, Ron, thank you for sending. This is absolutely amazing. I tell you, it blows my mind that sometimes something like this gets sent in because like, I'm just some chump who puts videos up on YouTube and people like it enough to want to send me their stuff. And when you get really good stuff in, man, it is really flattering. Okay, speaking of good work that's very flattering to get, I have another project that is exceptional that I want to share with you. This is a set of three zines that come to us from a gentleman named James Lee. This first one is called Hands That Work For A Living. The second zine is called Kinetic, and the third is called Up On The Roof. James includes a little note which reads, Dear Ted, a longtime follower of your YouTube channel, thank you for all the great info. I'm including three photo books in this package for your critique. I came to photography rather late at the age of 57, and after a few years of taking photos of everything, I stumbled into this approach of spending a year taking photos of one subject and self-publishing the finished work. I like this pattern for two main reasons. One, I go out with purpose, looking for specific images. The second reason is that at some point I need to stop taking photos and start on the book. Choosing photos, deciding on the order, designing the book, etc. I send the finished product to family and a few close friends, and I'm refreshed to start a new project. Anyway, interested in your thoughts? Take care, James. Okay, James, little critique I want to talk about. First of all, this is extremely well executed. I love the fact that you end up, whether you intended or not, at becoming a conceptual photographer. I think that hands that work for a living is extremely strong. I love the fact that this is a series of portraits where we never really need to include the face. It's always the hands. It's a great concept. I think everything holds well together. This is really well done. It's well printed. It's it's not too long. It's just a nice little statement. I love the fact that you're spending a year on each one of these and then kind of wrapping it up. You've got to move on. You've got to do the book. They're well designed. They're well laid out. Everything is really nice. The next book, Kinetic, deals with motion studies. This is also very well done. And I love the fact that with motion, we do have a layer of abstraction in the photograph. However, through that layer of abstraction, we're still able to make out what it is the picture is, what we're looking at. And in this case, it's dogs throughout the book. This reminds me a lot of the early experimental work of people like Alexei Brodovich, actually, who was the famous art director from New York who was tearing up the fashion industry, comes out with this book called Ballet, which is edgy in that he's right on the cusp of what his camera cannot do. These are the days of slower film speeds, slower lenses, and so he just lets motion work itself out in here, and because it's dance is the subject, it ends up being very successful. Anyway, that reminds me a lot about this. I love Kinetic, and then probably my favorite in this whole series is Up on the Roof. This seems like a really obvious drone technique, and it's something that you don't really see anybody exploring, and I absolutely love it. There's a whole nother world that exists from a different perspective, a different vantage point, and normally when you see people use drones, it's either the video feature or they're taking just landscape shots, but to get over something and really go for these harsh angles, there's some really wonderful work in here and some really stuff stuff that's really quirky, and one of the one, my favorites in here by far is the one over the uh, swimming pool that's indoors where you see the guys swimming. It's like you have layers going on. These are really great photographs, James. You should be very very proud of these. There's not a lot that I want to criticize on these. I think they're all well designed. I think they look great. I want to include them in here because these are things that I think people need to see as examples of zines that are very well put together. So, uh, man, James, awesome work. Thank you for sending. All right, so I have some more awesome projects I want to share, including this little book called Here Alone. It's tiny. But first, I want to take a second and give a shout out to our sponsor this week, the awesome people who make these videos happen. I'm talking, of course, about the amazing folks over at Squarespace.com. Listen, you need a website, and we all know how much work that is to build and maintain, but it doesn't have to be. Squarespace is by far the easiest way to build your online presence. It's also the best way to grow a business that works for you without having to write a single line of code. Do you just need a simple portfolio or a blog to showcase your work? Well, Squarespace is perfect. Featuring a drag and drop interface, it's intuitive, it allows you to build galleries quickly and update your site with ease. Are you running a business? Well, Squarespace gives you additional tools for things like appointment scheduling, private member areas, social media tools, and even advanced email marketing. Do you sell products or services? Well, Squarespace has you covered with complete tools to power your store, from merchandising to checkout so that you can sell, ship, and build your customer base. You can even sell classes or manage appointments through your website. And and with Squarespace extensions, you can easily sync with third parties to manage, optimize, and enhance your website. From social media integration to SEO, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to grow a business that works for you. So head over to Squarespace and sign up for the free trial. Start with one of their award-winning templates and see what you can create and just how good you're going to look. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com AOP and I can save you an additional 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just use the offer
offer code AOP on checkout. So give it a try and see if Squarespace is right for you. And I wanna give a special shout out and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so next up is this little book that comes to us from Casper Christensen. This is called Here Alone. Casper also includes a note which reads, Dear Ted, I hope that this book finds you well. I'm a Danish street photographer and I just finished this project from Copenhagen and Paris. And I also hope that you like it so much that you will review it. Wish you the best, Casper Christensen. You can follow Casper here. I'll put that in the show description as well. So Casper, I do like it and I will review it. The first thing I want to say is that I love the size. I like little things. And what I love about that is that Casper didn't feel that he needed to make something that was just ginormous. A lot of photographers do that. We have the tendency to think that bigger is better and that is not always the case. The reason I like the size, it is very intimate and has a unique way of drawing drawing you in. First thing I want to say is I love Casper's street photography style. I love the minimal quality. It has a really quiet vibe to it. The color is outstanding in all of these shots. They all have a particular mood to them. He has a certain palette that he likes to work with. There's a lot of browns and grays, but there's also a lot of gold tones that come through on these. They're really well done. It's very minimal. It's a different style of street photography in that people are sometimes a part of these images, but we get people walking away a lot. And so it has kind of a somber quality to it. It is actually quite interesting and it's reflective of the title. Casper, the only criticism that I have with this, and I wanna talk about this a little bit because it's important, as much as I love this size, I question whether or not it's actually appropriate for a lot of your images. There's a disconnect that's not working for me and allow me to explain just a little bit. So almost all the work in this book is shot in landscape orientation. However, we have a format that is smaller. Therefore, we have all this space in here that's not being used. Now we do have some spreads where we have facing images where we have one on each side. That does take a little more advantage of the space. And then at times you also do some full bleed stuff, which actually uses all of the image. I would be careful Careful with the full bleeds, and here's the reason why, and I've seen a lot of people do this. When you have a physical book, you have a spine, and we have this area of the book that we call the gutter. It's this fold right here, and it is physically hard to see. Now, this one is not so bad, but there are some images that uh, if you don't put them towards the middle of the book, you start to lose content and you lose information in the fold. Like this is one of them. It's a very dark image, and it's really dependent on the part that sits inside the gutter. So my only concern is that, that just there's something with this form that's that's off with your style of photography. And that's not a bad thing necessarily. I think in this particular case, I would not be afraid to print a slightly larger book. It's just gonna be easier to read. I like the fact that you didn't go for a horizontal book. Those kind of bother me a little bit. I'm pretty conservative with traditional book values, but uh, that's one thing that I think is just, I just question whether or not it's right for the format. However, one thing I might suggest you experiment with as your next endeavor is to actually play with scale a little bit because you use a wide angle lens on these, so there's a lot of information with the street that's attached with these. And I think that if you had something that was a little bit larger in scale, more zoomed in, it might work better with this format. Anyway, you've got some great images. I really like this moody style that you've got going on. Just keep it up, man. Thanks for sharing. This is awesome. Okay, next up is a zine, a collection of images that come to us from Ryan Fetterman. This is called Wander. Ryan includes a note which reads, Hey there, Ted. Enclosed is a compilation of what I think is some of my best work from my first full year of photography. Photography has truly changed my life in the short amount of time that I've been practicing it, and you and a handful of other creators online were some of the bigger catalysts for this passion. I would love any critique that you could give me, and I have found it hard to find people to give me substantial critique so I could keep improving. It's honestly so crazy that I could work in film slash animation for half a decade, and the thing that motivated me to pick up a camera for the first time didn't come from my fellow colleagues, but from a couple of close friends in the YouTube algorithm causing me to stumble across the content like yours. Keep doing what you're doing as an inspiration for so many. Best, Ryan. So one thing that I will say to you, and anyone who has a significant amount of experience should be saying this to you, is you've had an incredible first year. Now comes the next 14. All right, I wanna clarify my tone on that because I don't wanna sound like I'm the old guy saying, yeah, nice job, kid. Let's see you get better over the next 15. It's not like that. You're at a point in your development that we've all been there. And when I look back at the years of my own development, 
Like that's a really cool time. And what I'm saying is really enjoy it, embrace it. You've got to get interested in who photographers are that came before you, the history of photography, uh, what inspires you, what influences you, what is going on right now in photography. You need to go to museums, go to shows, you need to find books. Uh, if you can't afford them, go to a library. There are ways to do all this stuff and start your intellectual journey as a photographer. This is one of the most exciting times I think of anybody's development. If you're really serious, you've got a great first year under your belt and now it's time to up the ante on all this stuff. And that's where you really wanna just take this and crank everything up to 11, as they said in Spinal Tap. In fact, there are times where I wish I could actually go back to that point in my life where I'd had my first year and then I was getting serious. And I did do all those things. The difference though, I think, between me and some people who are probably a little more sane is that I tend to get very frustrated with myself and I have high expectations of what I'm going to deliver. And so I have a very short temper with my own work. I wanna be doing things that I'm not. And I allowed that to frustrate me a lot. And I think that that slows you down. I think that it did for me in some ways. So rather than take it from you know my intense perspective, just find a way to really enjoy that. I think that's where it really gets exciting. Like I said, you're off to a good start. There's a lot of interesting things that I'm seeing here. I love the fact that you're already thinking in terms of patterns, relationships to objects in the photograph that you're looking at. And I think what you're gonna do is you're gonna refine this a lot. You're gonna find the things that came before you. You're gonna find out what inspires you, what you wanna be able to take from that and, and make it your own and how to put your own voice into that. There's so many things that develop and I love the fact that you're actually asking people for critique and advice on this. That's something that uh, I was a little too proud to do and probably could have benefited from myself. So don't do it like I did. Like, you know, just, just love it. Just get into it, no pressure, nothing. Just make the best damn images that you can possibly come up with over the next 14 years and you're gonna go a long way. You know, another thing is I was talking about James Lee earlier in here with the zines. And one thing that James does is he just takes a year on one little particular idea, develops it and then does a book on it. And I think that's a really wonderful way of doing it. Hope you guys found that somewhat inspiring. I wanna thank everyone who's sent something in. I will put names and links to books and stuff in the show description. So check that out. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.